Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. And now, the champion, fighting out of Los Angeles, California. This man is a movie snob with a background in fighting and a lifelong addiction to all things superhero related. Presenting the reigning, defending, undisputed host of the show, the Iron Cube. All right, welcome to the show, everybody. This is episode number 133 of the Iron Coop Fights Movies. This episode is available on iTunes, YouTube, Google Play, and hosted by SoundCloud. We now have a Facebook page for the podcast. You can follow for updates as well as my 1-6 scale figure reviews, which I have not done either of those in a while, but <laughs> things are coming. Um, this week, the team reviews The Irishman, followed by movie, television, and video game news. I'm Kia, your host. With me on the show today are my co-host, Semerson. Hey, what's going on? And Everett. Hey, what's up? All right, the Irishman, and then uh, I think in the spoiler section we'll talk about the Mandalorian as well because I, um, I watched it. Okay. Um, so synopsis for Irishman: In the 1950s, truck driver Frank Sheeran gets involved with Russell Buffalino and his Pennsylvania crime family. Family. As Sheeran climbs the ranks to become a top hitman, he also goes to work for Jimmy Hoffa, a powerful teamster tied to organized crime. Buffalino. I thought that was Ray Romano's character's name. Are they it cousins? Are they're, they're cousins? They're related. Yeah, uh, I didn't catch that. I thought they were just like associates. Um, all right. I'm going to explain our rating system. On this show, we give the titles that we have watched a rating of win, draw, or loss. A win is a title that we would highly recommend, while a draw is a title we didn't love but recognize others may appreciate. A loss means we do not recommend the title. If you have not seen the review of the week and would like to avoid spoilers, check the show notes for the timestamp so you can still hear our news sections. All right, uh, Irishman, anyone want to go first? Non spoilers. I volunteer. Uh huh. Okay, so I give this movie a draw. Um, it was well acted for the most part, and it was, you know, technically interesting. There was a lot of history. What, what do you mean, technically? In the sense that the individual scenes and the things being done were all interesting. If you were to take a portion of this movie and describe it to me, and I'll expand on this in, in spoilers, it sounds interesting. Okay? And it so and watching a portion of it, you're like, oh, that's interesting. The problem is, and this is something we acknowledged, was the runtime. It was so long that there would be major events occurring, and then I would check the runtime, and I still have two hours left. And <sighs> that was just too much for me. I really started to not enjoy it after the two hour 45 minute mark. It just kept dragging on. Um, and so even though I recognize that individually this is probably a work of art as a whole with this long, I have to feel like it. there must have been some way to cut it down to a more manageable length. And I don't know if that's because like, oh, my generation can't sit still or something. But for me, I have to give it a draw because the length just took it out took it took it took me out of it completely okay um everett um all right i'll give this movie a win i was considering giving it a draw for the runtime but i decided against it i actually really enjoyed this movie um going into it like you're right the runtime is definitely like one of the downsides and i thought i wasn't going to be able to sit through it but I, it actually managed to keep my attention throughout the full three and a half hours and I was you honestly really surprised home? by that. Yeah, I watched it at home. Um, I think they only did a limited theater showing, and they didn't have any near me. So, yeah, I watched it on Netflix, which it honestly is a real benefit that it's on Netflix and not really in theaters because Emerson's right. No, I don't think anyone can sit through a three-and-a-half-hour movie in a theater, barely, barely at home because it's a little much. But besides that, Martin Scorsese is a great director, and you can definitely see that in this movie. Uh, there's some great talent in it. I think everyone did a great job, um, and I think we'll go a little. We'll go into this more when we t actually talk about it. But I'm I'm one of those people who didn't really know who Jimmy Hoffa was, so I feel like I learned a little bit about history watching this movie, and I really enjoyed it. So yeah, I give this a win. All right. Um, yeah, I'm gonna give it a win. Also, I uh, 
I didn't know Jimmy Hoffa that well. Like I, I was aware of him, but I didn't realize he was as big as the Beatles at one point. Um, I didn't even know that he disappeared. And uh, to be honest, I don't even remember what he was like famous for. I mean, I rem- I know now, but I couldn't remember. I thought he was a crime boss, <laughs> so I forgot about the union thing. Anyway, um, there's a couple things here. One, I read. I mean, I listened to the th- the thing afterwards. Did you guys watch that the, like twenty minute thing? Yeah, no. the, where they were like talking about it. Yeah. Yeah, and Scorsese said, you know, as he was trying to make this, what what medium do you put this on? It's not not what medium, but what format? Like in terms of movie television um like what is it and he's like it doesn't matter it just needs to be as long as it needs to be and so netflix is okay with that which is cool cool for netflix um having said that i think i think that maybe it could have been like a mini series Mm -hmm. like like a maybe a four hour mini series instead of like a three and a half hour movie i think that would have been better Here's the thing, like you say three and a half hours is too long. It might be for the pacing, but people will sit and binge for like five hours, no problem. I mean we've oh, done I that agree. for other shows, right? We've, we've watched like eight but, episodes. Well, when we get into spoilers, I'll, we'll talk about like the finer points of it. But I did feel like that there was – that with the amount of time – with the pacing that this movie had, there were periods where it's like, okay, is it, are things starting to come to a close? Or like, are, is something... And then you look at the time, and you're like, oh my god. Here's the other thing. So I, I hear a lot of... Um, I hear a lot of criticism. Some people are like, oh, it's the same old Scorsese stuff. Which is... I'm like, yeah, it is, but it's the best of it. It's, it's not... I don't know how you feel about Wolf of Wall Street, but I thought that was garbage. Like, it had some cool things, but... I don't need to see people like humping the floor and like that kind of shit. I'm okay with like a style, but of like wackiness and you know eccentric characters. Um, he definitely does that here, but I think it's played down a bit, and and I just really enjoy that. But so people are saying the people that I heard that said they liked it all watched it in parts. Did you watch it in one sitting, Emerson? Yes. I think that. I mean, that's not your fault, but I think that is the problem. Um, And then I have a weird thing where, like, when I watch things late at night, I seem to enjoy them way more. And I think that it's because of the time commitment. Like, if if I'm going to watch a movie at at 6 p.m., I'm like, all right, I'm going to watch it till 8, and then my night's pretty much over. Like, if if I watch this movie right now, my night's pretty much over. But if you have those like weird nights where you can't sleep and it's like 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. and you don't really have to wake up in the morning for anything, you, like I, I think I, I don't know, I, I've enjoyed movies a lot more. Like the first Guardians movie, which you guys know is like not my top five or anywhere near it. Um, I watched that one night in the middle of the night and I thought it was like the greatest movie. It, I, I really enjoyed it. And so this is one that I also watched late at night and I watched an hour and a half of it. And it was insane to come back to it the next day and be like, holy shit, there's still like over two hours left. <laughs> and um, so, so yeah, I, I think that that also contributed, like watching it in parts. Um, I think you you almost have to because then it becomes a saga and not like a story. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And when you're in, when you're ready for the saga, you don't care how long it takes. I mean, it could have been a little shorter, maybe like less voiceovers but this like I, I i'm not sure what i would cut out you know every oh well, I, let's go into spoilers now but every can you think of anything you would cut out um i mean not not really i felt like a lot of it was pretty integral to the story but there's like a few mini things like like maybe like a couple of the prison scenes like with hoffa and that one gangster guy he was with with the ice cream Maybe some of that stuff, but, but that's like at the very end, right? S- something like that. It's like in the middle, like m- yeah, middle that's like end. Middle end. Wait, yeah. ice cream guy? Like when it's, it's, Hoff is in jail, and, and he's obsessed oh, right, with right, like, right. getting the ice cream. Right. Wasn't there he, just like, one make, scene? He makes like that, that derogatory reference. Yeah, but that scene lasts about like four or five minutes. Yeah, but there are like li- I think there are scenes like that sprinkled throughout the movie that just kind of add a little bit more to the character development. 
I, I mean, more like- to the point that sorry, more to the point that you could make it a four hour thing is. I really didn't feel like when they kept saying we we tried to help him, we tried to help him. Like I know they told him a couple times, like, "Hey, you got to communicate." I didn't really get the sense that they had done everything they could. Did you guys? No, but I thought that was the point. I thought the point was that he had become a mild inconvenience. They warned him a couple of times. And okay, they were like, yeah. All right, we're getting yeah. rid of him. Yeah, they gave him kind of like a courtesy, and then they just basically threw him out because they were they were more happy with his replacement, right? No, I don't know. I don't know. Um, uh, another thing that I I'm not sh- okay. So you have to remember, like, there's three main characters in this, right? And they have to age through time, right? Mm-hmm. So they did this de-aging thing. What do you guys think about it? Do you guys notice the de-aging? I, yes. I feel like it, it's good in some parts. like, But in others, it, it, I don't know. I felt like I was kind of watching like a really good video game cutscene at some points. Like there's one specific scene. They're like sitting in a bar and I'm looking at De Niro's face. I'm like, that's – it's – it's it's focusing too much on his face at that one point, and it starts to get noticeable the longer you look at it. It's missing. It's missing like like faces change in certain ways, and so what they've done is they've like got, gotten rid of a lot of his wrinkles and stuff. But unfortunately, you can't really change. Like you look at Michael Douglas, and you look at um, who's the guy that was that played Ego, Kurt Russell. Um, their faces they've aged better than let's let, like let's say Robert De Niro um because like he's older like his his face shape has changed you have to change that so they they like de-aged his skin but he still had the face and structure of like an older man yeah i, that, I was going to make a comment on that like that of, one scene where they're baptizing their first child and he's supposed to be like a young man up and comer. I was like, what he the? He looked f-? old. Yeah. Yeah. He never yeah. looked young to me. Never. He, in fact, when he There's was one thing age, I have in he my just notes. looked like he was like early old age. That's what I was saying. Yeah. Like they, they de aged the skin. They didn't de age his. Have you seen him in Godfather 2? Have you guys all seen Godfather 2? Yes. Long Do you remember ago, him yeah. in the flashbacks? Vaguely. Antonio Andolini. He, you know, he had the mustache. He was playing uh, a young. Uh, oh yes, yes, yes. What's yes, the guy's yes. name? What's the famous guy's name? Uh, he, he played Jarrell, Marlon Brando. Um, so yeah, he was playing him, and like you know, the, the bone structure is completely different to what he has now. Like he looks way different. Um, so I don't think that I think that the aging. This is like one too far. This isn't one of those where they could be like, "What if we did an Ant Man prequel with Michael Douglas and it?" I mean, I feel like you could have done it with Michael Douglas. Well, this the other one, thing is, uh, yeah. well, the other thing is, besides like his face and his skin, you can kind of tell that De Niro's like an old guy at this point. Like, there's like the one scene that kind of took me out of the movie was remember the scene where he goes and he beats the shit out of the grocer because he oh he, like, I was gonna bring that up yeah 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 you you could see him like not really giving it his all. It was it was so bad. Yeah. Meanwhile, the guy's, like, like, screaming his lungs out on the ground. No, that's old school shit. That's Martin Scorsese. Like, that's how all of his movies were. But in 2019, that just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. Um, Did you you see that, Emerson? Uh, Which part? When he's beating up the grocer. And he's like barely touching him. Oh yeah, yeah. It it, it like it's, it's it's off the entire scene because like you can tell he's not really stepping on his hand, and the guy's like screaming. And, and he's like, old. Like yeah. he's moving he slow. moves <laughs> slowly. Yeah. Um. How about how about the other fight scene? Um. When Al Pacino's character jumps across the table. And oh, when the the guy comes to the meeting and in shorts, like, tackles and it's, him. It's so slowly. clearly not him. It's yeah. so clearly not him. And you know another thing which I don't... I've never really noticed before in a movie. God, what the fuck are my dogs barking at? Just like non-stop. Every 20 seconds. Bark. <laughs> <Bark. laughs> <laughs> Fucking idiot. <laughs> um, the other thing I never really noticed in another movie was... You know when like two people are talking and they're gesturing? Mm-hmm. And then it cuts to like the other guy talking. And the other guy... The first guy is standing still now. Mm-hmm. And so, like, there's a little bit of continuity because, like, half a second ago, he was, he was like, swaying and moving his hands. And then he's just, like, there was a lot of cuts like that 
where the continuity didn't match up in terms of the motion of the character, which I'm not like that's nitpicky, but I've never, I I, I got to go. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, I see what he's like. I see what he's saying though. Like the continuity there is kind of screwed up. But I, I didn't I didn't really notice that while I was watching this. Did you like the whole like swaying thing? Yeah, I noticed it. But as I said, this is like ridiculously too long. It's a good movie, but it's so long that like. It just, it, I just don't care. I really don't care. And also, like, some of the, like, what should have been the draw for me was the history and, like, the, the like, oh, the mob is intertwined with the political system and, like, Jimmy Hoffa and stuff, because I knew about that stuff before it started. Mm -hmm. But, as I said, like, and maybe it was because I was in, like, a, a strange mood, like, you know, I kind of had other stuff I wanted to do after, so I was, like, expecting it to be done, but... After, like, the hour and 40-minute mark, or, no, it was the hour and a half mark. After the hour and a half mark, this thing hit me like a train. Because, mm -hmm. like, you see, you see, <laughs> like, main events happen. He seems to be, like, making it. He's rising up in the organization. He's well-known. He's, he, and, like, you keep waiting for, okay, what's the point? And then you realize, oh, wait, the point is nothing because we haven't reached the crescendo yet. Yeah. Um... But what did you think about, like, how he became part of their little group? I, I thought it was a really good example of, like, a, a rising star story. I thought it was really well done. It, it could have been a little bit shorter or cut up into parts. But I, I didn't see anything wrong with it. He, he was in with the mob. He was doing his job. No, no, no. Well. I'm specifically but, uh, talking about, like, how, what did you think about how he literally became part of the group? Like, the, in the first 40 minutes. Oh, you mean, like, how he was, like, a truck driver and stuff? Yeah. I, I don't, in that I don't evolution. Know, that was, like, one of, like, the th like two things that kind of confused me, like, a little bit. Like, it it, it kind of started a little bit weird, but it grew into something I understood. So I really liked how that was, like, portrayed. Because a lot of times you think, like, oh, organized crime, there's no way to get in. But the reality is, like, it probably is kind of like that. Like, you start doing something because you know people. And that you do a little bit and then a little bit more and a little bit more. And I really liked how, oh, he's just a truck driver. He just drives meat around. Oh, he gets these stakes for these people. And then it slowly escalates until, okay, now he's killing people. And, well, like, he's loyal. So I, I enjoyed that part of it a lot, how he, well, like, gets into the organization. you got to remember, that's like Martin Scorsese's thing. And I think that he's done it better in other movies, actually. Which one? Um, mean Streets is like an up and comer type of thing. I think it's like a tragedy, but um, Goodfellas. Was that him? Was oh, wait? Goodfellas was did great. he do Goodfellas? I uh, don't. Am I remember. am I just associating him with the mob movies? <laughs> um, um, hold on. Yeah, Martin Scorsese. Yeah, um, Goodfellas. Uh, I want to say there's one more. Casino. Have you guys seen Casino? Uh, no. no, I have not. Have you seen Goodfellas? Yes, I've seen Goodfellas, but. I that might like be one worth yeah, like he going did, back he did casino, at some yeah. point. He did The Departed too. That's a great movie. That's another like up and comer. Yeah. So um, yeah, I would say of all of those of the mob films, like where the guy comes up into prominence, I would say this is probably the worst one. <laughs> um, yeah, he's just a truck driver, and then they you know they give him a little job here or there, and you know he he he's not afraid to kill people, and so that makes him a good bodyguard, hitman. And, uh, yeah. Okay, um, well, there's, I think there's just characterization of the fact he was in the military. Because, you know, it goes from, like, him being in the military to him, like, yeah, giving that's, these stakes. That's pretty common, though. That's a common trope in the mob. No, movies. I recognize that. But what I'm saying is, like, I, I'm, it makes sense that he could go to kill people then. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, there's, there's two things I, I wanted to ask you guys. Number one is, I was a little confused on how he started working for Jimmy Hoffa. Like, did the mob send him specifically, or somebody tried to kill Jimmy? And, All right, I remember uh, that in the courthouse. And Jimmy's getting upset. And <laughs> no, um, you guys know Seinfeld, no? All right, forget yes. It. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, uh, they he asked Russ for like help, and so Russ recommended what was his name? Sheeran. Yes. Jimmy. Frank what, what Sheeran. Frank, Frank Sheeran. Sheeran. <laughs> Jimmy. <laughs> Yeah, stop. Okay, and then the second the second thing was, what did you guys think about like every so often they'd show somebody and they'd give you like a little title card that says who they were and how they died. 
well, like, I shot thought that was, three times in his face. Or I something. thought that was interesting because, like, I don't know who the fuck these people are. And to be honest, the only part I care about is, like, that they died as a mobster. Like, the criminal part, you know? Not mm-hmm. who they were as a person. <laughs> and um, and then later, when it, when he's, like, the one that did a few of those, right? Did I? Was did it? I, yes. The yes. guy with the glasses for sure, right? Oh, yeah. He killed that guy. Yeah, um, he shot him three times in the face. Yeah. So like I thought that was that was cool too because I didn't see that coming. The, did, I don't think they did one for Bobby Kennedy though, which is like the one I was expecting them to do it for. You know, sometimes like the casting for those things is perfect, and other times, like when they bring in historical figures, like if you look at the Crown, the casting for the Crown, there are various historical people. Is like uh, the Dexter guy for JFK. Um, they got Gillian Anderson to play Margaret Thatcher. Mm-hmm. Um, John uh, John Lithgow as Winston Churchill, you know, like stuff like that, and and they look really real and authentic, and sometimes not so much, um, like in this one. I, I I mean, did you guys? I I, I don't know. Was the, was JFK in it at all? Did we see? Him no, at all? only uh, only directly. archive footage. I want to go back to something you said, Emerson, um, about an hour and a half in, and I really think that the time commitment, like when I watch films and I I have to squeeze it in. Like I, I find myself more impatient with the film as it tries yeah. to like, like take its time, and I'm like, no, get to the thing. Yeah, but the, I will say, like, when I was watching it in the second viewing, and like you said, Jimmy Hoffa comes in really late into this. For, as like that's kind of the um, that's Big like point. the yeah that's the the turning point the twelve page twelve like hook. Um, so that comes in like well, I want to say like an hour and a half. Is it? It's an hour and forty five minutes where like it actually gets rolling with Jimmy Hoffa. Yeah. So that I get that. Like when you said you hit the wall there, to me I'm like this is just getting started. And then I stopped watching shortly after he met Jimmy Hoffa. Then I started again, and it's like him and Jimmy going through, and, and the, yeah. So that break helped you. Yeah, but I started to get tired of him and Russ because I felt like Russ wasn't doing anything anymore. <laughs> and so, but but I will, I just wanted to say, like, as I started watching, I was excited to finish the film. And I want to say an, with an hour left to go, I was like, you, I mean, you guys were on Xbox talking to Jade and I still had a fucking hour left. And I'm like, the story's pretty much over. Like, are they going to kill him or not? <laughs> and then after they killed him, there was still like 45 minutes. Like, I Jesus. know, I know. And that's what I'm saying where it's like, if this was a mini series and I watched like one episode and then I took a break and then I watched another episode and I took a break, that could be much better because yeah. then you have time to like ruminate and it's like, oh, I've completed one. But because it was one giant movie, I felt the need to like try to keep going through it because I was like, okay, I want to watch it in one sitting. It's one movie yeah. and ah, not fun. The thing I liked about the end, even though it was like not needed, was it was called The Irishman. So it was about uh, Frank. Is that his name? Frank? Mm-hmm. Um, it was about him. So when you see the fallout with his children, like I kind of like that because I like I live in a community where – I mean I guess I don't live there anymore. But I'm from a community where like wealthy people tend to disregard their children and you know that stuff catches up with you when you're older. And like your kids don't want to talk to you even though you gave them everything, you know. Um, and I like that. Like that was an interesting. That could have been like in another movie. Like that's a different story, maybe. Um, and I even liked how he waved off some of like the the court case stuff that he was involved in. He was just like, yeah, that's it's not worth getting into right now. <laughs> um, I, but the other thing I wanted to say is I watch it on my phone, and like I, I'm a, I'm embarrassed to say like I don't. I think like phones have ruined my um, attention span and I, it's really hard for me to watch something on tv if i'm not super invested in it or if i'm tired because my mo- my mind starts to wander and i get on my phone so yeah. now that i watch it on my phone like I, I like to watch things on my phone in general i don't get distracted so that that's like another thing that people might try it's interesting it, it helps like and and then i watch it in bed too so um but like, like while you guys were were playing last night with Jade on Xbox, I I was on the couch on my phone watching it. Um, otherwise, I'd be on my phone. The movie's too long, you know. Yeah, I would have been yeah. on my phone for sure. Yeah. So, 
the, yeah, that, all those things. Did you find attention. were you like not paying as much attention because it was your phone? No, I pay more attention because I can't go on my phone to be distracted. Interesting. And you don't mind the like small format? Yeah, I don't think you com- you completely forget. Dude, you watch it on a TV and you watch it on a movie theater screen like whatever you watch it on, you get used to it, whatever it is. And also, hmm. I have the iPhone XR and it's not it's not a small screen. <laughs> like I'm holding yeah. it an inch from my face like <laughs> I'm not missing any detail, you know. I I guess yeah. the resolution could be higher but it depends what movie. Like if I'm watching a Marvel movie, I tend to like to put those on the screen because I've seen them a bunch of times and I don't really have to watch all the time, but the picture's nice, like the picture quality, the sound. Um, a movie like this, you could watch that on your phone for sure. Um, like I watched – the first one I did this with was when we watched Split. Um, yeah, Split. And I watched it on my phone and like I didn't get distracted at all. Um, so I would recommend that if people are struggling. Um, all right, let's switch gears. And do you guys have anything else to say about this? Nah. I, I had one like little comment about Hoffa is that um, I, I know my parents watched this and they really loved it. I remember after I finished watching it, my dad told me this cool thing. He said there were a bunch of rumors about what happened to Hoffa when he was like a kid. Yeah. But apparently the biggest one was that he was buried in the end zone of Giant Stadium. <laughs> which I thought was interesting. <laughs> That's funny. Um, yeah. Yeah, the boomer generation loves this movie. They love Martin Scorsese. They love Robert De Niro. To get Joe Pesci back, like I actually, I'm embarrassed we haven't even really talked about him. But like Joe Pesci, Goodfellas, uh, he was in Home Alone, right? Yeah, he was um, in Home Alone. Casino, and a couple other things. But I think Raging Bull, he was also in. Um, like they, they love the fact that these three are together. Did I already say that I don't think Robert De Niro needed to be in it? No, Did I, I didn't say, say that? that directly. He was the only one that, like, his role didn't have to be a, an old guy. Like, you could have just aged someone up. You didn't need Robert De Niro for that. Joe Pesci yeah. was a smaller role, and he kind of left acting for a bit, and he came back. Like, I thought he was good in that in that role. Um, mm-hmm. Al Pacino was great as Jimmy Hoffa. I think. What do you guys think? Yeah, he was great. Yeah. I'm not sure Robert De Niro really fit, especially with the de aging thing. Like, he had the wrong face for it. Well, who would, who would you put there instead? Like, do you have like a replacement? You, you got to take a guy that's like in his forties, I think. Like his skin hasn't co- totally sagged, so you can de-age him easier, give him more hair, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. And you can also age him down, like you know, give him balding hair, white hair, that, that more wrinkles, makeup, that sort of thing. Like you saw Ray Romano, he's not in his forties anymore, but you saw like when he was young, he looked a little old. So imagine if it was like someone 10 years younger. And then when it came to his daughter's wedding, he had like, they had grayed him up. And I don't know. Like, I think you could have done that. I probably. see what you mean. I just don't think it had to be Robert De Niro. But the thing is, like, we probably wouldn't have watched this if it wasn't Al Pacino, Robert De Niro, Joe Pesci, Martin Scorsese. Like, if it wasn't that, that's the main selling point. It's not Jimmy Hoffa because no one really cares at this point except like older people. Well, I mean, if, um, if it wasn't him, I'm, I'm like seventy percent sure that Scorsese probably would have chose like Leonardo DiCaprio to do it. Yeah, because like yeah, he's probably, one of his favorite yeah. actors. Yeah, that, now, I don't I, think that would have been good. I will say, um, I think that Netflix is the right place for this. I don't oh, think yeah. it belongs. Oh, one hundred percent. Anywhere yeah. else, I do not think this would have been a good investment. This is the type of shit where if you like this kind of thing, you could sit and watch it, like whenever you want at home it's not people people aren't going out in droves for this anymore it's just the the tickets are too expensive um it doesn't have like the spectacle part aside from the casting there's some spectacle there but it's not stuff kids are gonna like go buy tickets for so well i'm glad that we didn't see this in theaters also because especially since it's three and a half hours you're right like people can't sit for that long especially with the theater experiences we've had it would. I think that'd be like a nightmare. People would sit and stir. They'd start it's making true, noise. Yeah. They'd I could get they'd through get it phones. in a theater. I, f- I for sure could, but everyone around me. I mean, unless it's, it's probably just going to be old people, and that's also frustrating. Um, all right, let's shift gears to Mandalorian Episode 5. And we're going to talk spoilers. Can we also talk about 4? Because we didn't talk about that, I don't think, last time. Okay, last week I hadn't seen it. Is that what happened? 
Yeah. Yeah, we had both seen it, but you did. I don't think you did. Okay. So I hadn't seen it, but I did watch it, and I guess I forgot I watched it. I thought I was two episodes behind, but I guess there's only five, right? Yes. Yeah. How many are there going to be total? We don't know. Um, maybe like an eight or nine, I'm guessing. i got to be honest. Like It could end right now. And it I'd be should. Totally fine with kill, it. <laughs> kill it now. But I'm okay, not happy. Let's, let's this start is on not four. good. Okay. Four was trash. I yeah. just want to point that out. He With Gina Carano? Random, yeah, he yeah. gets a random love interest, and, like, their entire love interest is built on the fact that he, like, kind of lives in her hut. And then yeah. that secondary female character, the Imperial Rebel, is like, you could settle down here and have a life with her. And he's like, oh, it's kind of hard for me to think about whether I should do that or not. And she's like, I'd take it. I, every part of that episode drove me insane. He goes to this planet. This woman who we don't even know who she is somehow gets the drop on him, fights him to a standstill, despite the fact that he's supposed to be protecting Baby Yoda and he's worried about protecting him and has killed everyone else who is a threat. He, like, lets her live to talk with her. They form a plucky little team. Oh, guess what? She was a drop trooper or something. Blah, blah, blah. Then, oh, God. It was all horrible. I hated it. Yeah. So, did he take off his helmet? Uh, yes, but we don't see it. He takes it off to eat. But he's not supposed to do that, right? He's, no, not, he's not supposed to do, to do it that. in front of He's not allowed people. to take it off in front of other people. Oh. Because but that, he, he this is an that, ancient though. religious thing that, you know, no one else really had. I thought that was, like, going to create something where he might not be a real Mandalorian or something. Well, he's not a real Mandalorian. He was adopted. Yeah, but, he, like, he's, he's a part of the religion, I'm saying. Yeah. But I oh, thought okay. that he was going to... He was going to maybe be a, an imposter, like he got he got the armor from like a dead Mandalorian or something. Hmm. That, that's I thought that was one of theory. the theories. Wasn't that one of the theories at one point that he was just like know. he got the armor somehow? All I know for a fact is that episode four, it, this has gone pr- predictably downhill with each episode, and but episode four was one of the steepest drops I've seen. It Dude, literally you know went people from, love it, right? I know, and that's what drives me insane, and that's why I've been yelling about it on the podcast every week, is because all I see is people praising it, and I'm like, first of all, this is not any different from stuff we've already seen. He's a classic hero. This is not, like, new. And second of all, it's stupid, guys. It's stupid. It's it's disappointing, too, because I really love the aesthetic of it. Like, it looks cool. Like, I just bought a Mandalorian action figure to use with my shoots, but the fact that they it's really, like, stupidly used... Like it, the writing is terrible. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I, this fifth episode is like yeah. garbage. Yeah, yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> Even I was like kind of caught up in the fan service. I was like, oh, 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 they're doing this and they're doing that. But I should have known. Like I don't know what I was thinking. There's no substance. Like what was I expecting? There's never been any substance. The whole episode is like. What if we sent them to Tatooine? Like this is how I imagine the like exactly. if okay if if I was in the writing meeting, this is how the conversation would go. They'd be like, "Hey, what if we have a an episode where he goes to Tatooine?" And I'm like, "Yeah." And then and then what happens? And he's like, "They go to Tatooine." And I'm like, "Yeah." And then and what happens like when he gets there? He's like, "He he walks. There's like sand, you know." And I'm like, "Okay, <laughs> yeah. What like what is he gonna do?" No, Jade, I'm not doing the podcast. <laughs> You really have to ask me. <laughs> so, so I'd be like, okay, what is he gonna do in Tatooine? And they'd be like, Tuscan Raiders. I'm like, yeah, I know there are Tuscan Raiders in Tatooine. What is he gonna do with the Tuscan Raiders? Get directions. <laughs> what? <laughs> what is going on? Okay. What and is happening in this episode? Exactly, and the, the first exposure I got to this episode was Blake had watched it, and Blake's like, yeah, it was pretty good, and I was like, oh, really, what happened? Yeah, and this Blake, mindless and, shit. And, no, no, no. It's and not Blake pretty goes, good. Blake goes, you know, actually, now that I think about it, I can't tell you what happened at all. I don't remember any of it. And I was like, so it's bad. And Blake's like, yeah, I, I guess so. <laughs> and it was really short, it seemed like. Yeah. yeah okay, was, but, but what's well, that's because that nothing happened. What's that actress's, what's her name? Mulan. Yeah. Which one is that? What, what's her What's her name? Um, she Ming plays Nguyen. Agents of Shield. Yeah. Ming Nguyen. Yeah. Okay. She, she's really she nice. Had, she came to the library one time. I saw a TV spot of her 
before this show came out of her explaining her character and she's like she's yeah. a deep and mysterious character and she's going to expand on the lore and I'm like with oh, a okay. screen time of less than five minutes yeah I know it's just like it's just nonsense it's all nonsense you, you know that what my Bobby biggest gripe with this episode is would you say it? you know what my biggest gripe with this episode is what did you guys notice like in the very beginning of the episode he lands on Tatooine that woman who's working in the garage or whatever. Oh, gosh, she was so obnoxious. Yeah, not only was she obnoxious, like, I think I told you, Emerson, to watch what she does with the baby Yoda when she's yeah. holding him. Oh, my God. You can definitely tell that's fake. She's, like, shaking the shit oh, out yeah, of him the yeah, entire yeah. time. Yeah. Um, is is that Bobby Cannavale's brother or something in this show? Jake Cannavale? I have no idea. Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, they have to be related. That last name is an American actor and a stepson of Rose Rose Byron. I don't. Who's Bobby Cannavale? You guys know who that is? He was no. in. He was in The Irishman. He was the butcher guy, and he is in Ant Man and the Wasp, and he's in Boardwalk Empire. Bobby Cannavale. Oh, this and, guy. Yeah, yeah. No. And Jake Cannavale. Is he his relative? I can't. I can't find it. No one says it. Um, anyway. Oh, he's his kid. Jake Cannavale's his, his son. Kid. His yeah. son. Okay. Um, interesting. I thought that he was pretty annoying too. Um, I definitely thought it was going to be like the story where he's way in over his head. Mandalorian saves his ass multiple times, and then at the end, the kid decides to give up bounty hunting. Mm-hmm. Instead, he tries to do a little backstabby thing. And I kind of lost track of what happened then. Like, so they killed him, right? Yeah. And then what happened to Ming Na Wen? She, quote unquote, she, died. Yeah. But then the episode ends on a cliffhanger with a random figure approaching her body. Yeah. So, so. maybe okay, she'll be resurrected. So maybe the Bill uh, Burr will save her. Yeah, I, th- I thought I was waiting for Bill Burr. I thought this was the episode, but um, uh, so. Is that Boba Fett? Uh, it might. There are a couple speculations. Uh, the three that I heard were it's either whoever Bill Burr is playing, Boba Fett, or Cad Bane. Those are the only three I've heard. It has to be whoever Bill Burr is playing. playing. Yeah. You're not going to follow up Boba Fett with Bill Burr. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but yeah. I, don't, I don't know. Why would they, they, why would they include Boba Fett in this anyway? the mandalorian it's fan service no, it's fan service that's the real reason the real reason is because with all almost all the star wars stuff these days their big reveals are look we took this thing that has already existed and we're gonna like dangle it in front of you so you can all clap like the seals you are yeah but isn't isn't boba fett supposed to be dead yeah uh, ever yeah but like they, they the only way the only place <laughs> darth comes maul back- just showed up yeah, but they had established that he Every, was alive in the show. Death is not permanent. Death, death yeah, is how not did, permanent. How did they establish it, Everett? In the show? They just yeah, brought how? him back. Yeah, he just showed up. I guess he just showed Yeah. But I, I thought they had already stated that... First of all, okay. Boba Everett, Fett survives no one, in the extended stuff. No matter but what they, they stated state... That, no matter Whatever. what they state, no matter what logic declares, no matter what, they can literally just snap their fingers and bring it back. Darth Vader is going to be in the Rise of Skywalker. He's going to be resurrected. I, I think I have to start seeing these things, like not from a fan point of view, but as like a cynic. Because you guys are right. Uh, they're Whoa. just going to not make sense and do stupid shit just because people will drool all over it. I don't know if I would call myself a cynic, but I just don't believe in them. And they're proving that they don't have ideas. Like, they're, they're telling us that. We don't know what oh, to yeah, do. Oh, yeah, no, that's obvious. They have no creativity at all. They just keep reusing all the same tropes that they, like, Star Wars pretty much made in the first place. So the, the more ideas they have that are terrible, and then they run out of those ideas shortly after, um, they're just going to go back to the well of, like, remember this guy? <laughs> and, exactly. Well, um, if they if they really want to like scrape the bottom of the barrel with that one, they'll have the Mandalorian join the rebels at the end. Like like, I, like I want to go through like the real logic of the episode. So he goes to Tatooine. Why does he go there? Because he's damaged, has to repair a ship. It's the okay. Planet. So he has to land. It just happens to be like the most fan no. servicey yeah. planet in the world. And then the the secondary explanation is Tatooine. They know what that is. Let's send him there. 
Yeah, out of all the planets in the galaxy, you just happen to be flying close really? enough to Tatooine. Wait, so like what you're talking about the Yoda? What? Ever, what? Emerson? Is, is is when you said they know what that is, is that Oh, you're talking no, about the audience. The, okay. Yeah, the fans. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so he goes to Tatooine, he walks around like the cool scenery. I mean, I was okay with that. I'm like, hey, it's Tatooine. And then so they it's go on. It's empty though. Yeah. You that? Yeah. No budget. <laughs> um they go they go um, to the sand dunes where the Tusken Raiders are there, no kidnapped by them or anything, just a straight up, like, here, give them a thing, move along. Then they go do this little, like, contrived battle with the sniper, which I thought was okay. Like, the, the flare was was cool. Like, that showed a little bit of intelligence. Um, I didn't mind seeing his armor, like, hold up, like, you know, give it, giving it some value on, on screen. Um and then once once they they get to Ming Na Wen, they just it just becomes like a standard. Oh, I shoot you in the back right before I was going to shoot this person, and blah blah blah. And then it's over like five minutes after that. Um, so, like that episode, um, I'm like, if you think about it, Emerson, remember when we were on that TV show, and yeah. how much time and effort was spent into making like one shitty scene yeah, of a wrestling yeah. gym. I mean, just think about how much time and effort was put into this. I know for that for for such a crappy end product. There's there's it, that episode like literally skip it. You could skip it and miss nothing. Exactly. So he, I'm assuming he's leaving Tatooine with Yoda, right? Isn't that where we started the episode? Yes. Mm-hmm. And okay. here's the problem, by the way, yeah. because notice that like thus far, for the most part, he's gone to planets we've never seen. And guess what? That's more interesting. But. For some reason, they're like, well, we don't want to try to come up with something new. We don't want to try to get the audience interested in a new planet. But now, don't worry. We can just have every character in the goddamn universe go back to Tatooine. And you see this in the new movie, too, The Rise of Skywalker. Oh, she's on a desert planet. I wonder what it is. Oh, a jungle planet. Oh. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Jungle planet. All right, so here's like a description of, of who we think that person is. Wearing a cape and spurs on his boots, Common Sense says... This is Giancarlo Esposito's mysterious Moff Gideon, a character featured heavily in marketing materials who we've yet to see in the show. However, those spurs have led to many fans speculating that Boba Fett has made his return to the Star Wars universe, as that familiar jingle could be heard in both The Empire Strikes Back and in the footage from a screen test featuring the character way back in 1978. Throw in the fact that Fett was last seen on Tatooine, and it seems entirely feasible that he's somehow back among the living. While this would be a typical example of fan service, <laughs> most hope that the title character of the Mandalorian would be revealed as Fett, something which was debunked fairly early on. Executive producer Dave Filoni recently stated that it would be hypocritical for the guy that helped bring Darth Maul back to life to say that somebody can't survive a Sarlacc pit, but I don't know. That sounds like he's saying <laughs> he's bringing him back. An older battle damaged Fett who managed to pull himself out of the Sarlacc pit attempting to take out the Mandalorian in order to regain his reputation would be pretty awesome, but time will tell whether that proves to be the case. I mean, that's got to be a last episode type of thing, right? Yeah, yeah he'll be in the bar like drinking after it's all over and Baby Yoda's happy and then like the door will open and someone will come in and be like, where's the Mandalorian? It'll pan up and it's Boba Fett. <sighs> Honestly, I, I'd give the whole series a win overall if the last episode was just Boba Fett straight up murdering Baby Yoda on screen. But it'll never happen. <laughs> that would be cool. But I don't even want to see Boba Fett because so much of Boba Fett was the mystery. And yeah. they have they have they have no ability to like write good characters right now. Like They basically are proving that. And mm-hmm. so I, I just I don't think I need to see more of that. Um, all right. Do we have a fight of the week this week? My fight of the week was based around um, the Irishman, and the only the only one I could possibly think of is like um, you're you're sort of hoping you're trying to get them all to turn on each other. I thought you were gonna have me uh, be the grocery store guy. I mean that could that could work too. That's a that's a funny one if you want to be the grocery store guy. But I was thinking like you're trying to get them to all fucking kill each other without you having to lift a finger. Are we talking about like uh, Sheeran 
uh, Hoffa and Russ. and Angelo, like Russ, like that group. They all they all basically hate each other because the movie shows that like the minute someone does something weird, they just kill each other. <laughs> so like, I was just thinking like uh, it was the point where you know how there's that point at the end where the guy with the glasses walks in, someone sees him walking into the building, and that's like the moment that he gets taken out. Yeah. I, I, the minute I saw that, I was like, you know how easy it would be to just make up random rumors and people just start getting murked. <laughs> um. Yeah, you know what you're what you're essentially talking about is like the Punisher or maybe Batman because they they like take on the mafia, you know. Yeah, but I'm not talking to you about like doing it in the sense of like killing them all. I'm talking about like just like saying um. some things that make them kill each other. We're just doing like word of mouth, like, "Hey, I heard this guy walking into the Capitol building and snitched." Yeah, exactly. Like, how would you prove it? I, they don't show how he proves it about the guy who walks into the federal building. No, well, I, I mean, like, how would how would they prove it? All they it. would need hard evidence. Who would need I, hard? I evidence? think I think if you if you tried to do that, you would end up getting killed too. <laughs> Maybe, because the but rumors it seems start, like yeah. it seems like it was pretty easy to just destabilize shit. Well, that guy, that guy got killed because someone actually did see him walk into the thing. He actually did get called. Yeah, but like, was it one guy who saw him? It was one guy who saw him, yeah. But he was definitely there. That's the thing. Like, he was there. So you would really need someone, people to have, like, le- like legitimately do something, have someone catch them in the act, and then stop everyone from talking in order to, like, cause misinformation. Um, it's tricky with so many people. You could do one guy, maybe. Hmm. But with, with to, so, to do so many, I don't know. Hmm. Anyway, we could just move on. Yeah. Um, we're at 47. All right. Um, I, I was watching Family Guy season 18 on Hulu. I know Family Guy is pretty lowbrow, but I still think it's a funny show. Do kids like it still? Not really. Not the young kids. They have like other stuff that's basically the same, but different. But like, it's still known. Is Ricky Mor- Rick and Morty still going? Yes. Yeah, they have a new episode, There's a new episode, episode tonight. tonight. Is there? Is that the last one? No, because they skipped last week. Oh, so there's two more weeks still? Yeah. Yeah, um, Yeah. so... Yeah, Family Guy Season 18. The only thing about it, though, they're doing a lot of jokes about, like, breaking the fourth wall. Like, not like they're talking to the camera, but it literally cuts. Like, there's one episode where they're they're doing a, a, a DVD commentary. Huh. And, and like, the whole episode is them watching an episode that we've never seen before, but they're, like, talking over it. And, you know, like, Peter and Lois get into a fight and shit like that. Um, and then there was another one where they kept doing cutaways where someone was like, I wrote that joke. Like, that's why that joke is in there. And, it would, like, they kept doing that. Um yeah, there's been a lot of that. So I'm not totally a huge fan of that, but I still find the show to be funny. Like, it's a show that I'll give my full attention to. I, like, I think there's jokes in there. Um, oh. Interesting. All right, I watched Booksmart last night. I couldn't sleep for some reason, so I watched Booksmart. Have you guys seen it? No. It's Olivia I... Wilde's movie. It's it, it's pitched oh, as sad. the female super bad. And uh, it was great. I actually really liked it. Um, really? At first, I thought. I mean, it had good reviews. At first, I thought. The, is this this movie that we see those trailers before every movie? Like she's like sitting there, like I'm the director of. Yeah, I'm not sure why those part? are still going on, but yeah, that's the movie. Um, and it, it had great word of mouth when it was out too. But Booksmart, this is another movie that belongs on like a streaming service. It, it doesn't belong in theaters. It's just theaters are not for these types of movies anymore. Um, but this is a great film to like put on when you don't know what else to watch um there's a little bit of sex in it it's you know teenage super bad so i think super bad is one of the funniest comedies ever made do, do, have you guys watched it yes yeah a long time ago you know i i'm, I'm like vague i was vaguely acquainted with mclovin really the real guy he went to el camino with uh oh, fuck i forget his name that's hilarious i don't he remember like his a, name he was like in kick ass and stuff hold on yeah yeah, he went to El Camino, and he's my age, and I had a lot of friends at El Camino, so I would see him at parties. Um, I didn't really know him, but I like I, I might have said, talked to him one time. I don't remember. 
Um, uh, what's his name? But yeah, like it, it was kind of he was kind of well known at that point because um, Superbad came out. I want to say twenty seven, two thousand seven, two thousand eight, something like Aaron, that. Aaron is it? No, not Aaron Taylor Johnson. It's uh, no Christopher no. Mintz Plast. That's his name. Yeah, that's him. Yeah, and he, you know he has he did kick ass, and that was it. I think right. We haven't seen him in anything since then. Yeah, um, he, he did kick ass. So anyway, uh, I think that's one of the funniest movies. This one. It's female oriented. You do kind of have this a lot of the same stereotypes. Like there's the fat friend and the skinny friend. Neither one is like overly attractive. They're both outcasts. They're both going to a, a big college. Super bad. Only one was going to a big college, but they're both going to Columbia or something the following year. Um, it's the end of the school year. They're trying to have like one last hurrah because they realize that all the. It's kind of funny. Like all the kids around them are going to really good schools too. But they're all like idiots, you know, and socializing and whatever. And they're like, how did everyone else do it when we, we when we couldn't do both? Like they went to they got into a good school and partied and we just did uh, got into a good school. So like they're trying to go. It's the night before graduation. They're trying to they're trying to have like one night out to say that they went wild in high school or something. Um, and it's a little bit more modern. Like there's one of them's a feminist. Uh, sorry, not a feminist, but they, I mean they're both feminists. They love the Obamas and especially like you know the daughters and Michelle Obama and Malaya. Malaya is that her name? Melania. Yeah. No, not, no, not Mal- Melania. No, not Melania. No, the girl that <laughs> like got blown up or something. Mal- Malaya. Malala. Malala. Yeah. Yeah. They love her. Um, Stuff like that. Anyway, so it's a little bit more modern in that sense. It was a little more sensitive also, but I thought it was funny. The music choice is great. Like, there's there's good music there. Um, it, at first, I thought, like, this might be, this is going to be as vulgar as and crude as super bad. And then it got a little more sensitive, and I was like, oh, I'm not sure if this is for me, like, because I'm a boy. And, like, it's definitely, it seems like it's geared towards girls, but... But then that was like right at the beginning, like the first 10 minutes and the second 10 minutes. After that, it really picks up. And I I feel like it held itself together all the way to the end. Um, It was good. I liked it. They they keep, they're trying to get the address to like the big party, but they keep ending up at wrong parties. And uh, it's good. It's good. There's one sequence where they, they kind of get like drugged up by accident and they think that they're dolls and like the whole thing is animated. Um, It's good. Yeah, I, I highly recommend it. It's on. I saw it on Hulu, and I think it might be on Disney Plus when I use the Just Watch app to to look it up. Um, all right, uh, trailers. Black Widow. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I watched this once. I thought the music was kind of good, and then I I wasn't too blown away. And then I waited till like before the podcast to watch it again, to to actually look for the details and the things. Um, so first things first, it seems people are speculating that Hawkeye is Taskmaster because he pulls the bow and arrow. What do you think? Uh, I don't think so. I don't know. That's it weird. could be if he's like doing something, but I don't think it's going to be like that. The only I think thing it's is he was supposed to be uh, locked up. Exactly. And also, like, I mean, I guess it could be like, oh, he's being forced to do stuff, but like. It just doesn't make sense because he hasn't been gone off the rails yet. Yeah. Well, he would. I don't think Taskmaster Taskmaster is the actual villain of the film. No, he's like a henchman. Yeah. Now I do wonder though, is he? Is he maybe part of a flashback villain? And then it could be Hawkeye. That could be potential. But wait, overall, what did you think of the trailer on your second watch? I thought it was good because I didn't like it at all. I There's really, one I, I found it very giant bland, red flag. Very bland, very boring. The dialogue to me seemed like questionable. Oh, hey, sis. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. that scene is the giant red flag. That yeah. tired trope of let's fight each other before we talk like normal people. Yeah, and then, that is so oh, tired. God. That and is also, bad. Also, it's just like I I don't care as much, like. I'm, ever since like Endgame came and went, I just am kind of like, eh. Yeah, I, I'll be honest. Endgame took the wind out of my sails for the MCU a little bit. Part of it because yeah. it felt like a conclusion, but also part of it was because I just didn't feel like 
that movie was that great. It's certainly epic. I don't know if like I find it hard to rewatch. I agree. Yeah, like I it, tried to put it on the other day and like I don't know. I just don't care. It's always well, the, the thing is when I put it on when I put it on I like tend to skip to the battle. That, and then I just too. watch that. Even even the parts I like, which is the time travel, which is for me like when we reviewed it, I said that's where it really picks up upon repeated viewings. I skip that too. Yeah, because <laughs> it's just like I know what's gonna happen. I and I the know battle's it, like, pretty well. bland too, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It, well, I mean, yeah. Th- like, there's there certainly some interesting good parts concept of it. art that came out that showed that Ant Man was supposed to have giant <laughs> ants with him in the battle. Yeah, no, I think that would have been sick. I think uh, that would have been sick. Imagine I think people like, don't like ants. I, people don't like ants, but I think that would have been like sick because it showed them like fighting with the uh, the leviathans. <laughs> And like it was, they had a lot sick. of concept stuff that sounded I liked cool. It. I but mean, they didn't add. yeah. The problem with that is it would literally overrun the entire battlefield. Oh no! Yeah, it was like him fighting them on his own. But I was like, I would rather that. That seems kind of sick. But like, because you can like, kill the ants. Like pieces of the battle, when they run at each other. I I mean that's a good moment always for the first few seconds. But like the the Rooster Brothers were so good about creating real conflict and civil war, and then here. Yeah. It, it's just like it's just so bland. Like it's just two two armies running at each other, and it stops a lot for them to talk in the middle of battle. You don't really get any sense of scale of like where the front line is and who's doing what. And yeah. I don't know. And like, what are your favorite parts of that? Not not. I don't like. I mean, there's elements I like, like Valkyrie riding the Pegasus, but I don't really like the way that they executed it. I guess my favorite part of the entire battle is just like. Thanos like running in and like basically beating up everyone who challenges him. But the thing is, that's not the battle. That's Thanos doing his thing. Yeah, honestly. Running in. Oh, yeah, but you don't even really get to see Thanos. <laughs> yeah, he pretty much well, gets beat up whenever you see him on the field. Well, well no, he's holding his own. The face with the power stone he's holding funny. his own, but who does he beat? Well, that's what I'm saying. Like he, what I would have liked to see is I would have liked to see him like murdering people. Like no one can approach somebody. Him. Yeah, um, but of course you you can't kill anyone there because you have to give Tony the send off. Yeah, and you can't do that if there's someone else that died right there. <laughs> you just, just can't. Him. Yeah, you, like every, that would be the number one thing. Like, huh? Hawkeye didn't get a funeral. Like shit like that. And who else, who are you gonna kill at that point? You know. Um, like Wong, I guess you could have killed Wong. But then you're gonna get called a racist. No, Asian people you can still be racist towards. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's only women and black people you you can't kill off right now. Do, are they still killing off the black guy in movies? Like, is that still mm, a thing? Sometimes that was definitely a thing for like twenty years. And like, yeah, like horror movies, the black guy dies first in every single horror movie. So anyway, like back to Black Widow. I'm excited to see her get her own... Uh, first of all, Jade's not listening, but I think Scarlett Johansson's like one of the hottest women. <laughs> 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 um, but so like I'm on board for that. Um, I wonder how old she is now. She's older than me for sure, but like I got to assume... She's like in she's, her 30s, right? She's got to be starting to get late 30s now. And that's kind of amazing that her career has gone this far for a woman. They usually don't last 35. like 35. 35? That's it? Wow. Yeah. So she's six years older than me. Anyway. She was um, married to Ryan Reynolds? <laughs> Kia's yeah. doing the math. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, she she also kind of lost weight. I think, you know, she had kids and all, got into shape for certain roles. Do you remember her in the first Iron Man, Iron Man 2? Yes. Her body was kind of different. Oh, yeah. And, um, and her previous roles before this, she was very more, much more like, the eye candy and like more voluptuous looking like that yeah and mm-hmm. she's definitely changed which i give her credit for like i think that's part of the reason her career aside from getting the marvel thing but she leaned into it you know and she's done pretty much only action movies as far as i can remember except for don john which was not good but that's well she did fault. she did uh like skin i think it was called she did like she's an alien didn't she it's do an Lucy? interesting one didn't she do what um, that was like experimental horror. Did we just lose Emerson? Did I just lose both of you guys? 
Hello, hello, hello. Emerson's hello? back? Yeah, we, hello? we had like a disconnect Something, something. weird just happened. Yeah. Well, she yeah. did a movie um, called Skin. What I was going to say. That? Yeah, it was like an experimental horror movie. She was like a creature. And she like, she, she didn't fully understand like where she was or what she was. And she like doesn't talk. But like weird. she's very attractive, but she's also like a monster. <laughs> didn't she do Lucy as well? I remember that movie. So that was, that's that a that superhero was movie. That's a superhero. Movie. Yeah, I mean, was like her movies haven't horror. been hits, but she's a star. Um, so I SpongeBob like her movie. Like the original one. She is. Yeah. Weird. That was like her first voice acting credit, I think. Oh, okay, whatever. Um, yeah, so she's a, she's like a, a legitimate star. I wonder if they'll make a trilogy for her, or maybe it'll be handed off to her sister, because um, she's kind of a well-known actress too. Florence Pugh. Poog? How do you say well, her name? Knowing her future in the MCU, I feel like they can't really take it that far, can they? I mean, you could do stuff that she was doing, you know, in between Civil War and Infinity War. Yeah, I guess that's true. If the movie doesn't end with her like bleaching her hair blonde, theoretically, you have more years in between. That that'd be funny if at the end of the movie it says Black Widow returns in Endgame. It would be Infinity War. Or Infinity. I'd be Is okay it? with that. I don't mind like I don't mind them kind of acknowledging like, hey, we didn't give her the time that she needed prior to this, and so this movie actually fits here. Like, I'm okay with that. Um, but anyway, let's actually talk about the trailer. We haven't said shit about the trailer except that that fight scene is garbage. With her I agree. Sister. Hot I shit. Agree. Hot shit. So. And the dialogue there is dangerous too. Hey Very sis. Bad. Very bad. Um, what do we? Okay, obviously it's sad that we don't get what's his name as the thing. Um, yeah, he's Red Guardian. David Harbour, a Russian mm-hmm. Captain America. I like him. I don't like the costume, but I don't like Cap's costume either. Like the whole A on your forehead and red, white, like the stupid. So now he's like, you know, the Russian version. I don't care so much for that. I like him as like, I like those weary veteran characters. I actually kind of giggled at the you got fat line, even though it was kind of cringy. Yeah, I like it. I like that he's past his prime and he still has to, like, that's relatable. I do like that. Um, It said that it's it's revealed that Red Guardian and Melina were once married. I assume that's Rachel Wise. Mm-hmm. And uh, Melina's like the mother of the group. Red Guardian's the father of the group. And they have two daughters, apparently. Um, yeah. I don't, here's I don't, the thing. I'm kinda, well, it's it's yeah. kind of a weird balance with this trailer. Like, on one hand, I'm really excited to see, like, the white Black Widow, like, the white costume and stuff. I thought that was Black cool. Guardian. I might buy that. I thought yeah. I thought that was a cool look. Especially if it's, like, in the snow and that gives it real, like, purpose. Yeah, I think that that's cool. Well, yeah, I'm excited for that. But on Emerson, the other you hand, didn't think that was cool. I understand that it's like, oh, it's nice. But the thing is, I'm looking at a lot of this as like, oh, it's just like, I don't know. I, I think I would have preferred a movie that was like more of a prequel rather than between Civil War and uh, Infinity War, just because like she'd have to be young though. I I understand, but like. With the white suit specifically, I was just like, I, I really couldn't get over the minute she said, oh, hey, sis, in the trailer. Because <laughs> I was like, oh, God, like, is this what the movie's going to be? And then after that, I was like, this is just kind of bland. I don't know if I care enough. And I, I don't know, maybe the trailer is purposely hiding things, which I Marvel's that, done before. I think that but, interaction with them is for the trailer. I feel like it's got to be different in the actual release. I hope so. Yeah. I swear to God, hope so. Because the, then the tone is completely different. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. I, I kind of expected this movie to be like a spy thriller, like like old, yeah. like before it Iron is. Man no, and all that stuff. It's a superhero yeah. as a spy. This thriller. trailer, this no, trailer. I, I mean, like might... back in time, like before she was part of Shield, like when she was like a KGB agent, like with Bucky and everything. Uh, okay, okay. Remember that movie Red Sparrow with Jennifer Lawrence? Oh, God. oh yeah, never mind. That's what this would have to be, if you're ta- for for what you're talking about. It's no, pre-Avengers. Think about that. I, I understand whatever it was saying. Like, I, I understood that expectation. But as it is now, yeah. with, like, the white suit, like, I don't know. None of Not a lot of the stuff I saw in this trailer, like, it didn't really excite me. Like, here's the thing, kid. You have the action figures, and you're, you're like, better at, like, looking at the suits and, like, seeing things. Uh-huh. So I maybe I need to rewatch it and, like, take a look. But the thing with me is I was just like, oh, God, are you going to just pander to me? And is it going to be like this? Is it going to be weird? Like, how many times in the movie is she going to say, come on, sis, we can get him? Like, but uh, the other thing is, like... I'm not sure what as, you mean. Like, what, what would... 
Why do you think that they would just keep doing that? Because, as I said, it's like that was not good writing. That was not good fighting. The scene itself felt very weird. And you said, okay, maybe they just did it for the trailer. All right, maybe they did. But I have low expectations here, and I, I don't have a lot of hope. However, Damn, the other thing turning is, into me? It must welcome. come with age. That must it be comes, it. It comes full circle. Um, but basically, like... I have low expectations here. However, you talking about thinking Taskmaster is a pawn, that's interesting, but the problem is, like, I don't know who the main... Vi- who would the main villain be? Her mom? That's that's who I'm thinking, Rachel Weisz, I think. Yeah, like the one who trains them all. And yeah. That could be interesting, but here's the thing. I want to see another trailer, because Marvel does a lot of times they lie in their trailers, and they edit it weird. So, like, I need to see more. Here's this for a plot prediction. Taskmaster and Red Guardian fight... Red Guardian maybe dies. I feel like Taskmaster will be removed from the plot somehow. And then the two sisters have to team up against the mom who's revealed to be pulling the strings. And then huh. maybe uh, and then Natasha like goes off on her own later at the end of that. And you assume that then the sister will be... Um, what's her name? Yelena? Something like that? Yelena. Uh, she'll be the next Black Widow, which I'm okay with. You know what I'm... Okay, so I'm looking at a list right now just to refresh my mind of, like, Black Widow's old villains. And the two that I'm seeing that I feel like have a chance to be there are, first of all, um, there's Yelena Belova, who's the, you know, the other Black Widow. That's that's her sister. So she might do a turn. But the other one is, do you know who Crimson Dynamo is? Yes. Yeah. I've heard of him. He, he's like Russian Iron Man, sort of. He uses He uses a mech suit. I wonder if they'll do something like yeah, that. Yeah, right. Yeah, he's the. Um, I I I hope not. I don't need to see like the same character, but Russian. Like that's not. That's the kind of stupid shit in comics that. It's whatever. All right. Um, what else about this one? I mean, anything? I really don't have anything else for it other than it was. Uh, the only thing. The only thing I'm curious about is like. So it seems like the trailer implies that they're gonna shut down the school, right? That like created them, I the guess. red room or the yeah. They said like called? we're taking out the red room. So I want to know like was Taskmaster? I'm assuming he's a mercenary that's been brought in to like defend it. But I want I'd like to see like what is Taskmaster? Because Kia, you said he's you you predict he just is gonna be removed. Like I'd rather he doesn't literally just vanish and then he's gone. Like I'd like him to either die or like get set up to play some sort of role in the future. Well, Maybe, I kind of yeah. want to see him face against Spider Man. That might be cool. Like. <sighs> The way they did it in the PS4 game was 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 pretty good. No, it wasn't. I, I thought How? it was okay. How? I I mean, <laughs> this is the kind of shit. <laughs> okay, How now that I good? think about, maybe I jumped the gun, but <laughs> I don't know. I didn't maybe, play the maybe PS4 maybe game, so I have the, I like no the idea what you guys are talking let, about. Let me explain it. Taskmaster is a villain that like he can copy your fighting style. Like that perfectly, stupid. and he apparently gives you tasks. So the way that they did it in the game is he like watches you as he like he'll set up like goons to fight you, and then he watches you, and then you fight him three times where he does like your moves against you, and then like that's it. That's the character. Wow. So what about that was pretty good for a movie? Yeah, never mind. Forget it. Forget I said anything. <laughs> I it's not great. It, like the idea that he can adopt a fighting style is interesting, but also that seems like a little bit like it's just like like it's stupid. the task part. The task part <laughs> is the part that's like that I don't want to see in a story. He's like, your next task is to make a souffle. Like, uh, okay, yeah. Also, I mean, that's like I the guess fight of the week story, on a platter right there. I guess if you made a story where he was harassing a superhero, putting them in like mysterious like dangerous situations and then learning about them and slowly stealing them and then finally capturing the superhero and being like I'm taking I'm taking you over now. Uh, did we see that in another it film? It seems like though? it'd be more interesting for him to become the superhero if he can fight like them. Well, that's what I was saying. Yeah, like that has oh, to yeah. be the end game. Like not not to be Taskmaster but to be like Spider-Man or or Black Widow well, unless he's like gathering information Hawkeye. for someone else. I don't know. Which would weaken the character a lot. But also, I don't know if I want to dedicate a whole movie to that concept of Taskmaster. I'm surprised he's even the villain. Um, anyway. 
they probably needed like a, a boots on the ground type of villain, someone who uses bullets and fists instead of. They could have used radioactive powers. man. He's like obscure and not been used. Uh, I'm gonna be real. When you say radioactive man, all I think of is the Simpsons superhero. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> not yeah, good. I, I can see. Um, anyway, let's move on. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm in, I'm intrigued by the tone of the trailer. I like, aside from like Red Dynamo or whatever his name is, Red Guardian. Aside from his like forced humor, I, I do like that it's more on the ground, street level type stuff. Um. And then Bond 25. Did you guys see that trailer? Yes, yep. I did. Doesn't look good to me at all. Yeah, I'm not intrigued by it at all. Casino Here's Royale was so good. I'm, I'm actually, I'm not, I'm not excited, but I'm also not opposed for this because I didn't care at all. So I was just like, eh, okay, could be I interesting. I couldn't remember what happened in the last one. I don't even know if I saw it. I didn't see the last one. What I saw the called? last one. What was it called? It was, uh, what was it? Um, it wasn't Spectre. Was it? No, it wasn't. Uh, Skyfall? Wasn't okay, Skyfall here, here's ever. what I remember. Casino Royale was amazing. Quantum of Solace was not as amazing. Then there was Skyfall, and I don't remember who the bad guy was. Then there was Javier Bardem. Then there was... Um, yeah, it was the, last time. The, the German guy. What's his name? Hans? No. What's his name? Blofeld? The, the, no, the Inglorious Bastards mm-hmm. guy. Uh, uh, I don't know. No, no, no. Come on, the Who's guy with the big chin. You guys know him. Yeah, I know who you're talking about, but um, I don't know what his name Christopher is. Waltz. Christopher Waltz. Um, Christ, yeah, so Christ. then then there was him. Was that the last one? Yeah, Spectre was the last one. Yeah, Spectre was the last one. I can't remember... Um, I can't remember who that girl was. Like I, I, I looked her up and apparently... Because I thought she was 11 from Stranger Things. And I was like, she <laughs> looks older, but she's still too young to play his love interest. I looked her up, and it's apparently she was in the last one. It's not, it's not Millie Bobby Brown. Yeah. But yeah, Spectre was 2015. I feel yeah, like was this. They've been talking about this. I don't know. I don't. I don't See, care. See, that's the thing. I just didn't care about this. What I found much more funny was there were a bunch of people getting angry in the comments talking about how the people of color are destroying anything that is valuable to white males to eliminate their identity <laughs> and i'm like watching people scream about this i, I, I don't like, get Bro. it like do you mean literally destroying or talking about like ruining they the meant, character they literally are trying to destroy these people are insane and they're like they're they're going to war against white males because they don't want us to have anything and i'm like dude james bond's well, in the movie he's still white like it's just one person of color so who the is, 007 yeah yeah, yeah that was fine like, yeah, I, I didn't care about this. So I mean, I, there are the people that would like take everything they could from white people if they could. <laughs> so, I'm yeah, not sure how not real the threat is. is, but those that's people are out there. That's not what this is, though. No, this is I, not. I, she looked. Just, she looked interesting to me. Yeah, and that's the thing. This movie is the type of thing where I'm like, eh, if we review wait, wait, it, wait. I'm happy with didn't it. Didn't we if say you skip that, it? Didn't we say that she was going to possibly be the next one? Yes, yeah, was that it going to be a black female? Yeah, maybe that's why. He dies like halfway through, and she takes over. Or yeah. Um, what's her name? Is that? It's the um, girl from Captain Marvel, right? Yeah, is it? Maria Rambo. Yeah, it is. She doesn't look like. It doesn't look like her. No, but she. Yeah, it's I didn't her. I'm looking her at, at it. Um, so oh. yeah, that that could be interesting. I mean, Bond. I think Bond is done. I still like the suits. I, I'm, I'm. I like the cars. I'm not in love with the cars, but. When he pulled out the machine guns and started doing the the drifting, eh, <laughs> like that's not for me. Um, all right, Free Guy. Did you see the trailer, Free Guy? Yes. I, I did not. See Does that. not look very good. I'm mildly intrigued just because it looks like it might ha- have like some fun visuals. Yeah, but like mechanics. I don't know. I, it just looks like kind of kind of. It was too really much. unclear like what his role was in the world. Yeah. So. Yeah. It seems like he's an NPC that's somehow awakened. Which is, I mean, the the beginning of the trailer was kind of funny, but... Well, it's interesting, because when he said inside a video game, I thought it was going to be, like, subtle, but in reality, he's living in GTA. He is. He's living in GTA. So, I don't know what they're going to do when he, like, becomes active in his life, but... Yeah. The idea of, like, an NPC living in that world is kind of funny. Yeah. Well, because when, when we go to the bank, I just kept thinking of us going into, like, the bank heists. <laughs> Yeah, like like those how did people those that got robbed. 
Yeah, how did they feel? They literally did exactly what he did. They got on the floor, we shot at the ceiling, and then we left. <laughs> it's funny um, if they do like a joke where they the players keep failing the mission. So like yeah. it keeps happening. <laughs> yeah. Again again. There's potential for good humor, but if they like don't, if it just ends up being like generic, it could be boring. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Ryan Reynolds is probably the key. Like this, the script is probably generic, and Ryan Reynolds is gonna like make it funny. So don't expect too much. Um, yeah. Not that it, he can't do it, but like that usually doesn't work. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. Wonder Woman teaser. There was a little teaser where she's like flying in the air with lightning. I- the trailer is supposed to ha- drop today, but it didn't happen so far. So, unless it's It'll happening it right now, is it? Is it? Oh, can anyone check if it's? If it's already out. Um, shot trending. Emerson's checking. Everett, why don't you do your box office beat? Boom, boom. All right. Um, before I start, I should probably say this is a weird week. So there's a lot of like strange things that went on. But anyway, all right, so let's get to it. So it's number ten. Movie. What are you talking about? Well, I say that because <laughs> it's the first week I think we've had where movies have gone up from being lower instead of going just down. But I'll here, I'll get to that. So huh. anyway, starting off, number 10, up from 11 last week is Joker in its ninth week. Still going strong. Still, wow. well, it's in its up last 11, place. Wow. Yeah. All right, number weird. nine, same place as last week, is last Christmas in its fourth week. Number eight, down from number six, is... Uh, playing with fire. Oh, God fourth damn week. it! Still there. Fuck. Yeah, it's still there. Uh, number. I can't seven. believe it's still there. That's insane. <laughs> Who's seeing that movie? Who sees playing with fire? I, I Please no comment idea. if you saw it. <laughs> I have to know who's what kind of person is like who who goes to the movies for John Cena's the babysitting movie. <laughs> I'm. <laughs> I have no clue. Yeah, the trailer hasn't dropped yet. It's supposed to come out today, though. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. Number seven, still at number seven from last week, is Midway in its fourth week. Good. And number six, uh, down from number five, is 21 Bridges in its second week. <laughs> yeah. Number I'll five. watch it, just not, not in theaters. Number five, down from number three, is A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood in its second week. I forgot about that. Damn. I hope that Here's sticks around one. the Christmas. Yeah. Here's a weird one. Number four up from number 12 is Queen and Slim in its second week. Up from number 12. Wow. Yeah. Maybe it got a wider it, release. It has a 295% uh, pro, um, like gross rate. So that's, I don't know. That's weird. Maybe it did get a wider release. But uh, anyway, our top three... Number three, down from number two, is Ford v. Ferrari in its third week with 16 million gross domestic. Number two, up from number four, is Knives Out in its second week with 34 million domestic. And number one, still at number one from last week, is Frozen 2 in its second week with $157 million domestic. Now that's that's fifty percent less than they got last week. They had like two hundred million last week, so that's that's pretty. That's like a hard drop. Anyway, uh, that's all I got for this week. All right, sorry, Jude was here. Yeah, okay. What was number one? Number one was Frozen, hundred thousand uh, domestic okay. or hundred million domestic. Yeah, I want to see Knives Out, but there's honestly other movies I want to see too. Um. Well, we could talk about that anyway. Um, news. WandaVision had a black and white I saw this. photo reveal. Um, apparently, uh, what's her name? Wanda will become Scarlet Witch. Which, whatever that means. <laughs> so they said... <laughs> They've been having saying the oppor- that every movie. Yeah. Having the opportunity to tell more of their story, to see more of what Wanda can do, more of what makes Vision Vision, and most importantly, reveal a name that I'm not even sure we've said in the MCU yet. But we absolutely make a big deal of in the show, which is that Wanda is, in fact, the Scarlet Witch. What does that mean? That she is the Scarlet Witch? And that's what we play into this show in ways that we are entirely fun, entirely funny, somewhat scary, and will have repercussions for the entire future phase four of the MCU. I want to like that concept, but at the same time, when you say she becomes the Scarlet Witch, all I can think of is he becomes the Punisher for like the third time. 
That's the only thing I can think of. I just I don't have any faith right now in the Disney Plus shows. Hopefully, this one being run by Marvel instead of John Favreau will be different. But if it's gonna be like eight episodes of filler, just fuck it, man. Yeah, I don't <laughs> like, know. It's not worth it. Like fuck the whole thing. Is it is it gonna be like the Mandalorian where it's released on a schedule, or is it just all gonna be laid out there? Let me check with Kevin Feige and I'll get back to you, Ev. All right, thanks. <laughs> um, this uh, this official photo looks like it's a sitcom. And then there's some... These look like photos. I mean, they look like concept art to me, but apparently they're photos of uh, Bucky and Falcon in their civilian clothes, and they're just standing around talking like two partner cops. So, hmm. is Emerson still here? Yeah, I'm here. I'm just oh, waiting okay. for something I can comment yeah, on. Okay. Um, Justice League. Again. Oh, I heard this. Okay. Uh, over the summer, original cinematographer Fabian Wagner said that watching Joss Whedon's version of Justice League made him weep. <laughs> and he's not followed up on those comments by saying during a recent Q&A that if there is a Snyder Cut, I hope it's better than the one that is out now. A lot was changed. It looked very different. Watching Whedon's Justice League was in fact such a painful experience that the cinematographer admitted that he couldn't figure out what those reshoots changed altogether, but claims that 90... Wait, 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 wait. (laughs) Wait a second. Watching Whedon's Justice League was in fact such a painful experience that the cinematographer admitted that he couldn't figure out what those reshoots changed altogether but claims that 90% of Snyder's work ended up being scrapped. What? If you can't tell what was changed, how do you know it was 90%? Exactly. What the (laughs) fuck? I clicked on it because the headline said 90% of the work was scrapped. I didn't read that quote yet. That is... What the fuck? (laughs) I did principal photography for Zach. We finished shooting and he started editing. We did the color grading for the trailers, so the first three trailers were all things we shot. Then they started reshoots. I wasn't there. It was a completely different team. They reshot 55 days, I think. That the movie that was in cinemas was 10% of what we shot. Everything else, he just admitted that he's just saying stuff. This is nonsense. Now I do want to see the Snyder Cut just for fun. I've heard it's three and a half hours. I mean, that's if it's anything like Batman vs Superman, that means it's probably better. Just too long. Um. Anyway, so I, I'll, I'll watch it if they put it out there. And they're probably hurting for money. They should put it out there right now. There's no DC movies coming. Especially when yeah. there's like like no other movies right now. Well, I guess there will be for Christmas, but... Whatever. No, I'm listening out. I think they should release it as well. That's what it's First photos of Ghostbusters Afterlife. What? First oh, photos for this. Ghostbusters Afterlife. Nice. What is this? <laughs> it's the new Ghostbusters. We've reported on this. Um, yeah, we're pretty professional. We don't remember things. Um, yeah, it's about the two kids, blah, 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 set in the same world. A technical term for that long ago bizarre incident in New York involving an apocalypse summoning skyscraper, a gargantuan killer marshmallow man, and four working stiffs who managed to fight back against the ancient Sumerian god named Gozer. What? Okay, so <laughs> apparently that's like in the movie. Like th- it's referencing the things that happened. Yeah, so it's not connected to 2016 Ghostbusters. Trevor and Phoebe are about to find out who their grandfather was and whether they're ready to pick up the proton pack themselves. Okay, you got to make a good reason why they don't know who their parents were after or something like that. But hmm. I, I'm not a big Ghostbusters person. I think it's a generational thing. Like some people eat it up. I, Ryan made me watch it, and I was like, "Yeah, it wasn't bad." <laughs> <laughs> like I, I, I wasn't. He was like, "You haven't seen it. This is the, this is the best thing ever." Blah blah blah. Like okay. And yeah, there's some people that go nuts over that. I like the first one, and the second one's okay. But yeah, I don't know. It's kind of dated, but it's still funny. All right. Um, anything for gaming? I didn't have anything. Not um, really. The new Modern Warfare update came out. Okay, what what happened it's, there? It's uh, it's just gun balances and map changes. 
Um, it, all DLC is free, so they're doing a battle pass like Fortnite now. Is that game holding up, or is it getting stale, or what's going yeah, on? Yeah, it's still holding up. I'm still enjoying it. Some people are having yes. issues with it. Who? Uh, mainly, like, Blake is getting frustrated at it sometimes because of the skill-based matchmaking, which makes it very difficult to play with a larger group if you have, like, a wide variety of skills. What does that mean? Like, he's not as good, and so he gets So, basically what people? the game does is the game checks how good you do and tries to match you against opponents that are similar to you on a game-to-game -game basis, which is kind of annoying, as you can imagine, because if you have a really good game, you get up against some really good opponents. The problem is that if all of us play together and me and Everett do really well, and Blake does not, then the opponents get better and he continues to do worse. And uh, so, like, it can yeah. be frustrating in a group setting. Yeah. How's the yeah, gameplay, though? The gameplay is really fun. I love it. I mean, but I was really happy with the beta. It's like the beta, but, you know, there's better stuff. It still is like, people are still screaming that it's too defensive focused, too slow on Reddit, but I love it. I think it's too fast. And see, that's the funny thing, Kia, because I, 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 I understand why you think it's too fast, but if you see these people on Reddit, they're like, it's the slowest COD ever. It favors slow gameplay. You're not allowed to even move around. And I'm like, you people are, are, are these idiots. the people that are used to jumping around in mech suits? Yes, these are the people who've been playing Black Ops 4 and 3 and won a wall run. I mean, it just feels like they don't make games for people like me anymore. Like, I was watching, um, I watched clips of Battlefield 5 or whatever. And, like, I'm watching it. It feels sped up, like, ridiculously. But it's not. Because I, I feel, I think about that for everything. I'm like, is this sped up? Like, the game moves so fast. I don't know. I don't get the enjoyment from that. Like, am I supposed to run around with, a, like, a chicken with my head cut off? I don't know. I think it's just because, you know, most people want to be on the move doing something, doing something, doing something. And I think that's why the games that you've liked the most lately, like Wildlands, it allows you to choose your own pace. There is speed in it. It's not a slow game in the way that someone would think of a slow game. But here's the other thing, Kia. I don't disagree with you that games are getting more sped up. Look at Fortnite. Like, that's a very popular game. A lot of people love it. I just can't deal with it. And more and more, I find myself playing games I'm familiar with, or even Rainbow. Rainbow got too much for me. It's too fast. Too much is happening. I can't do it anymore. So, like, I, I find myself more and more going back to play, like, RTS games or stuff that I know. You haven't played Wildlands in a while. Do you, do you don't like that anymore? No, I just, I've been playing COD really. Like, I haven't played Battlefield either. Yeah, Battle just been, the, the Pacific is fun. Ah, cause yeah, see, COD's been satisfying my it. shooter, my shooter itch. I found that in the Battlefield games, if you play like the, with smaller groups of people, like not the smaller game types, but when your map isn't totally full or your game isn't full, it's it's a better experience because the game moves a little slower and it feels more like a real battle. You mean rather than everyone coming up over the hill as someone with a tank 500 meters back <laughs> lobs a mortar into you? Like the constant like, oh, I died from here, I died from there, I died from there. Like, I actually was able to run up the beach on Iwo Jima and, you know, like found positions to hide in and picked off some opponents and tried to move up and died, you know, like that sort of thing. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I beat Jade in Pokemon. I smashed her. Nice. I beat her nice. twice. <laughs> How'd she um, take that? She she actually took it well. She's not a good loser. She's really not. <laughs> oh, I gotta tell you, um, I don't think I, I showed you guys. I probably can't find it now. But there was a guy on the Ghost Recon subreddit who was pissed about how the battle crates were you heard how they're like not working properly? Yes. And so they've done away with them until they can fix them which is at least that's like a good thing but they've completely done away with it and i think i commented something like why did you expect or he, he felt like he had wasted his time doing them yeah yeah it was the boomer thing where he's like well why should everyone else get it for free if i had to do the grind because it was the system was completely broken yeah and he like busted his ass to, to get the stupid cosmetic loot bullshit things and he's like, well, other people wasted their time. And I said something like, you're saying the boomer argument of just because you had to suffer doesn't mean – like just because you went through it, you refuse to acknowledge that a system is broken and should be fixed. Like that's not a reason to keep things the same. 
just because exactly. you did it. And uh, he responded something crazy. <laughs> got, yeah, I'm assuming he didn't take that too well. I gotta, I gotta find it. It was the funniest. Please shit. Please do and send it to me because I um, bet it'll be just great. Oh God, that that just sounds nuts. I saw, I saw a thing uh, like two days ago that said Ghost Streak on Breakpoints was on sale for like fourteen to fifteen dollars. Yeah, it was it was bad. Um, well, and it, basically, what the guy said is. He tried to defend, like, he didn't even hear what I said. He basically argued, yeah, uh, I spent my time. Well, it's obvious that I would be upset about this. And he, then he ended it with something like, I, I, like I f- because they made it free, I feel like I wasted my life, which is probably how your parents feel about you. <coughs> and, uh, wow, very like, very uh, well balanced. <laughs> and I said, I said, I responded to him. I was like, first of all, I had the sense to know that this game was going to be a piece of shit from the beginning. I also had the sense to know that the looter shooter genre is also the biggest piece of shit out there. Games as a service is also another giant piece of shit. On top of that, daily grinding for Battle Crate for your stupid cosmetics is also a giant piece of shit. I happen to know all this. You didn't know any of it. And you say that I'm a waste of life? <laughs> And he responded. He went through all my post history for like two Again, weeks. Again, they do this every they time. They do this every time. Yeah, they're crazy. He went through my post history where I was asking in the Pokemon uh, Shield and Sword, Sword and Shield subreddit, like how to rematch the the champion um, after you beat him. So like I asked someone, like, well, where do you? How do you do that? So like he found that comment and he responded, "I'm not going to talk to someone who plays Pokemon." <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, please explain why. Please explain. He never responded. Of course. Wow. <sighs> yeah. That's uh, so funny. Good times on the... I find myself getting into more and more confrontations on the internet. People are so fucking stupid, though, on that subreddit. Like That subreddit is hilarious because you like I'm totally right. And so they... It just... It, that It's fun when you know you're right. But... Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I try to avoid... Like somebody on on Reddit this morning was trying to compare the Holocaust to the Japanese internment camps because I guess yes. few, some of the Japanese died, which is a horrible comparison because guess what? It's completely different. So not only we were the Japanese say, yeah, internment camps, you could leave. First of all, like not everywhere, but you were allowed to leave during the day to like go to the village. We yes, it was horrible. Yes, it was not good. Yes, it was unfair to the Japanese. But we did not kill them. We did not force them to work. They were not like beaten. They were not. They actually had a good amount of food. They had good lodging. They were allowed to leave. They could they volunteer were just rounded for military up. service. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um. But why? Why did? Why did they think that some of them died? Well, some of them probably did die. There were probably a few people who, like, had medical issues or a few people yeah, who Yeah, and they probably, got displaced and, yeah. Yeah, you know, and that is horrible. And it's a chapter of American history that is not only, like, depressing and sad, but it's something that we talk about fairly regularly and, like, but no, it's not like the Holocaust at all. Over so, uh, 9 million peoples are systematically rounded up and executed yeah. to the most technical aspect that western civilization has ever seen well a nation tries to conquer the world versus yeah we put these people in camps because we were terrified and didn't know what was going on so i i didn't say like what we did in the camps was good or anything like that all i said was it's not comparable to the holocaust and and because they were talking about this kid that died in in the immigration facility whatever they call right um the ice facility he like fell down and died. They're clearly not checking up on them, and they're saying that was like what we did to the Japanese, and and someone like other people were arguing about how it's they're not really the same thing. Like concentration camps are not literally what we think they are because of Hitler and what he did. Like a concentration camp is not necessarily a death camp. Um, it's just where people are concentrated, and so it devolved into people arguing about the Holocaust versus the Japanese internment and how bad they both equally were. And a couple people were saying that it was not comparable and they were being downvoted to hell. I also said, like I chimed in afterwards saying like, yeah, it, it's not comparable though. And he's like, uh, let me let me find what this jackass said. Oh, I'm reading it right now. Oh, yeah, did I'm you see my as well. did you see my comment? You, you said you're missing the point as well. It's not really comparable. Did you see what he said? He said, Innocent Japanese people were imprisoned in concentration camps in the United States during World War II because of racism and xenophobia. It was wrong. It shouldn't have happened. 
innocent Jewish people were imprisoned and killed in concentration camps uh, because of racism and xenophobia. It was wrong and it shouldn't have happened. It seems pretty fucking comparable to me. He's an idiot. Yeah. This person's a moron. There's there's yeah. no arguing with these type of people. <laughs> like yeah. it's not comparable. But look at how many slightest. upvotes compared to mine. No, because it's just people who are who are just mindlessly doing things. Yeah, you can look at that guy's profile and see what type of person he's. He's a moron. I mean, this rewriting of history has. Um, it's kind of scary. Like this must have happened in history a lot. Where like we're right now we're at a social point where people are literally trying to say things were the way ways that they weren't. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is this is ridiculous. Like society oh now God. accepts that the Japanese camps in America were the oh, same look, as the he Holocaust. Oh, plays Sea of Thieves. <laughs> Ever care to defend him? Yeah, I'm sure that game made him even more retarded than he is. Whoa, you can't use that word. Oh shit, Everett. <laughs> now we're gonna get canceled. <laughs> oh, Alright, uh do? for next week, I wanna see that Richard Jewell movie. Oh shit, he also likes Warhammer. Ah fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I wanna see Richard Jewell. You guys wanna see that? Uh, what is the Eastwood um, movie? The one with the bomber. I haven't even heard about oh, oh, that one. Oh, where he gets blamed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'd see that. My coworker was like, yeah, they screwed that guy. Do you remember? And I was like, uh, what year was that? <laughs> and she's like, 1995? I was like, yeah, I was five years old. Uh. And she's like, I was in high school. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. So she's like, do you want me to tell you what happens? I was like, no, I actually want to watch the movie. Yeah, I'll see. That sounds cool. Yeah, all right. Uh, Richard Jewell, I have another tournament next week. So we may not be able to do it Sunday morning. I'm just warning you. It may have to be Sunday night, assuming I get to go to the movie Sunday. That's fine. And then or okay, possibly following Friday week night. Star Wars, right? And then following week is Star Wars, yeah. Okay. All right, guys. I'll see you next time. All right. See you. Thank you for listening to the Iron Coop Fights movies. If you enjoyed the show, please be sure to like, share, subscribe, and most importantly, review our podcast on iTunes so that we can spread the show around. To contact the show, you can reach us at theironcoob at gmail.com and on Instagram at theironcoob. Join us for another edition of the Iron Coop Fights movies.